Boom shakalaka, what is going on everybody? Randall here from Crypto Love. Today's episode, I'm going to be talking about how I see the Bitcoin halving in 2020 playing out. So if you wanna find out exactly how, stay tuned. What's up guys? We have 37 days until the Bitcoin halving. Now, today's episode, I'm going to tell you exactly how I see this halving playing out. But before we do, I actually wanted to share with you good news about coronavirus. All right, not many people are doing that, but I want to share with you how things actually look very good about this. If you go look at John Hopkins University and you take a look, the curves are flattening. If we take a look in Italy, look at this, less cases. This is a five-day moving average, this line here. Same thing in Spain. It is the curve is flattening, it's heading back down. In the U.S., it's still going up, France going up, but we also look at Iran going down. China, it's been over a month it's going down. Even in the Netherlands, going down. So the number of cases are starting to drop all over the world, and that is really good news, meaning this is beginning to end. However, a lot of people are facing financial difficulties right now, and instead of selling your Bitcoin, which could potentially be one of your best assets do what the rich people do and borrow against your assets that way getting money tax free that you don't have to pay taxes on when you borrow it and then you can repay it later when you get your job back so in order to do that check out celsius you can download the app you can borrow against your crypto you never lose any crypto uh i've been using it i actually borrowed my first celsius loan it's awesome i also get interest on my other crypto that's held in there so not sponsored in any means but i will put an affiliate link down in the description if you and I think put in $200 worth of crypto, you get $10 and I get $10. So it's a win-win for everybody. Now, again, like I was saying, Bitcoin, 37 days away from the halving. What have we got coming up in the halving? Well, we could take a look at previous halvings to try and figure out what could potentially happen in this halving. And I've done part of that, but I also go into some other things as to what could happen with the price. So here we are, 2020. These blue lines, these are the halvings. We had one in 2016, one in 2012. So let's go back and we'll take a look at the first one. All right. So we had this one in 2012. Now, as you can see, there was an all-time high around $32. Okay, this was quite a while before, almost a year before the halving, and then it took four months for us to see a new all-time high there. Meanwhile, pre-halving, there was a pretty significant drop. There was a 39% drop pre-halving before it broke through there and eventually came up to the uh, to the previous all-time high. Now, same thing happened in 2016, okay? Previous all-time high didn't actually surpass that until after the halving. This time, it was nine months post-halving. Okay, so a little bit longer it took there, and we saw, I think, a 20-some percent drop in the price pre-halving. Now, let's focus on this halving right here. We've already seen a pretty significant drop pre-halving, actually more than the average of the two past halvings. We've seen that this one. However, we've also seen that it hasn't passed the previous all-time high, $20,000. Everybody's like, how come it's not there yet? Because it hasn't happened previously, it's not happening this time. But if we take a look at the average price that it drops pre-halving at the actual halving date, that would be $8,300, $8, and we are on track to actually reach that price. And also, if we take the average based on the four months and the nine months, we add those, divide by two, about six and a half months post-halving is when we would see the price break through the previous all-time high, the $20,000 mark. That would put us at the end of December, beginning of January 2021. So that's potentially where we could see the price nearing $20,000. And that's just based on averages of the previous two halvings. But I have another reason why I think the price could be going up there. And that is here. The actual mining profit profitability of Bitcoin. Now we have to remember that Bitcoin is mined, okay? So people, this is something where people have computers and they have to pay for electricity in order to actually mine the Bitcoin and then they sell that Bitcoin later. Now, they're not going to want to mine Bitcoin and sell it at a lower price than it costs them. That's a losing operation. They won't be able to do that long term. Miners can do that for a few months, and they've done that previously, but they won't be able to do that long term. So what is the mining profitability now versus what is going to be after the happening when the block reward drops from 12.5 Bitcoin to 6.25 Bitcoin per block? 
Well, fortunately, someone already put it together for me in an article. If we have the estimated cost breakdown, right now it's about $6,851 on average to mine a block of Bitcoin. And for that, you get 12 and a half, for the block, you get 12 and a half Bitcoin. However, that's the $6,851 per Bitcoin. However, after the halving, it's going to be not double that, but actually higher because the hash rate, as you can see here, is also increasing. So more, more mining power going into it. So because of that, they estimate post halving, post May 13th, 2021, it's not going to be $6,851. It's going to be $15,062 per Bitcoin to mine. That means that miners are not going to want to sell Bitcoin for less than that. That means there's going to be a lot less Bitcoin entering into circulation at prices below $15,000. Now, if we take that, we consider that and put that next to this chart right here, that's where it gets really interesting. Okay, That's where I think it's really going to make a big difference because here's the thing. $15,000 is, we'll just move this to $15,000 right here. Okay. And you see how close $15,000 is to the previous all-time high. So we have miners who are not going to be willing to sell their Bitcoin below this dot right here. We'll make it bigger just so you can... Uh, can we make it? Oh, come on. Here we go. We'll make it bigger. There. Okay. They're not going to want to sell their Bitcoin below that target right there. Well, guess what? They're going to be holding it longer. And the price is going to start creeping up and creeping up and creeping up and creeping up until it starts to get to $15,000. And then news is going to start coming out about how Bitcoin is pro approaching $15,000. Is it going to break the $20,000 mark? And it's going to get a lot of headlines and a lot of financial newspapers are going to be talking about it. And it's going to be on CNBC and everybody's going to be talking about how Bitcoin's at $15,000 now. Is it going to make it to $20,000? This is what everybody's talking about. It's post happening. It's getting near the end of 2020. Is this the time when it's going to break through the $20,000 mark, the previous all-time high, which would stick past what happened previously? And then... It's going to be in the news. All the people who panic sold all the way down to $3,000 here are going to be saying, oh no, this actually was a good investment. I should have held on to it. I bought it at $12,000. It's not $12,000 anymore. It's $15,000. Now it's going to be going up to $20,000. And then after that, it's going to go up to $100,000 or a million dollars. And it's going to be a maddening frenzy as Bitcoin goes up to whatever it may be, $100,000, maybe even higher than that. Because you got to remember, we just had the Fed printing $6 trillion. They just diluted the monetary supply by that much money. So instead of going up to $100,000, which we would expect by Bitcoin reaching what it does with the stock to flow model, could potentially go up to a million dollars this time because we've just doubled the monetary supply. So that is what I foresee happening in the Bitcoin halving. With the exception of one thing, there's only one thing that could be in the way. And this is kind of the red herring that's thrown in the mix. I don't know how this is going to pan out because you see this happening is different from the other two happenings for one reason. And that one reason is that now people can short Bitcoin. Previous halvings they could not. This halving people can short Bitcoin. And what that's going to do to the Bitcoin price after the happening, I don't exactly know because now there's a lot of Bitcoin derivatives. So it's not actually real Bitcoins people are trading. It's pieces of paper related to imaginary Bitcoin that don't actually have it. So mm, I don't exactly know what's going to happen because if we take a look again at this chart, we'll just zoom out and you can see here that since people have been able to short Bitcoin, which happened in December 2017, the price of Bitcoin has been dropping. Will it be able to break out of this trend post halving? Personally, I think yes. I'm no financial expert. I'm not telling you what to do with your money. I've always believed in Bitcoin long term because I think this technology could change the world, could completely replace banking systems. Maybe. We'll kind of have to see. I do feel that the DeFi solutions will replace banking solutions because why on earth would you put your money in any other bank like US Bank or any of these giant banks where you get 0.01% when you could just as easily put it in something like Celsius Network and get up to 10% returns on your stable coins. Mind blowing.
So guys, thanks for watching the video. Do check out Celsius Wallet if you have not. You can They're backed by Lloyd's, so they have a huge Lloyd's insurance policy under each wallet account there, so it does protect your money. Uh, and you can earn up to 10%, and you can borrow against it where you don't actually have to sell your crypto, and you can get through tough financial times. So check out the affiliate link down in the comments. And thanks for watching today. Let me know what you think will happen post-halfing down in the comments. And I'll catch you later. Have a good one. Peace.